This is it. We've finally done it. We are at the last lesson for Calculus 1. The last one. What a great year. What a crazy year it's been. You guys survived a few teachers. Ended up with me. I like it. Survived a pandemic with a quarantine. Are working through civil unrest. All in all, it's life. Life's going to throw you curveballs. You just got to know how to adapt. You guys did a great job. I appreciate your hard work and effort. And let's get to it. Our last one. And uh, it's about volume again. This time we're revolving around an axis, the same as we always have with the uh, revolution method. However, we're going to do it with shells instead of a disk. Let me tell you what that means. All right, if we revolve this around the y-axis, what we had done before is we took a radius perpendicular to that and we spun it around, which is great. For most of this graph, you're fine. But then we have this touchy part right here above this dotted line. Well, the distance from here to here changes. All right, is it possible to use the disk method? It is, but I'm gonna show you an easier way. What if we thought of all these as cylinders? So this method is called cylindrical shells because we are taking the shell or the outside of the cylinder and using that. So remember the lateral surface area of a cylinder was 2 pi r h. 2 pi r being the circumference of the circle, h being the height. So if you took out a cylinder and you cut it apart and laid it down, then this distance here would be 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle, and this would be the height. So imagine that folded up. I'm sorry, taking like a, a cylinder and cutting it and laying it flat. That's what you're looking at right here. So that's the area of the lateral the lateral side of a, of a cylinder. And volume, remember, we talked about being the integral of the area. Now let's put this in terms of um, our functions and our axes. So the volume is going to be 2 pi. The radius of this is actually going to be the x value of the function. If we're spinning it around the y-axis, then this distance is your x value. The height is going to be the y value. Now when we take an integral, remember we're finding the integral means we're taking every shell of a cylinder in that range from A to B. And here is your formula. We know another name for y is f of x. There is the shell method formula. We can rewrite that to be a little neater because the 2 pi is a constant. We pull the 2 pi out front. a to b x f of x dx. That's it. All right, let's use it. Here's our region from 1 to 3. We're rotating around the y-axis. It's going to represent the outside of the shell of our cylinder. Okay. So the formula is this, 2 pi. We're going from 1 to 3. Whoops, that's not 3, that's 3 right here. We're going from 1 to 3. x times the function. Well, the function is 1 over x dx. That is a very easy integral to solve because it's just going to be the integral from 1 to 3 of 1 dx. And we'll do this one by hand. Why not? It's been a while. The antiderivative of 1 is x. I'm going to evaluate that from 3 to 1. So we have 2 pi 3 minus 1. So that leaves our entire volume for this one would be 4 pi. So the volume of that shape is 4 pi. Notice with cylindrical shells, it doesn't matter if we have a gap in it or not. It doesn't make a difference because we're only talking about 
the cylinders. The cylinders are going from one to three. So I don't care about this gap. There's no subtraction to do. That's why sometimes it's a little bit easier than using a washer method. All right. Could have we used a washer method in this case? Again, it would have been tricky, but we could have because we'd have to realize that if we're doing a rotation with a radius, then we got to worry about this gap. We have to worry about this is the outer function for a part. This is the outer function for a part. It's a little bit more complicated than that. So sometimes the shell method is an easier way. And in a case like this one, the shell method is the only way to do it. If I'm going to rotate this around the y-axis, I couldn't do it as a rotation with a disk or a washer method because the outer function and the inner function are the same graph. And if you subtract it from one another, you get zero. So this would be impossible to do unless we had the shell method. But the shell method, same formula, 2 pi. The x's are going from 0 to 2. x times the function, which is 2x minus x squared, dx. That's it. Solve that, and we're good. That looks like a point. I'll try that again. All right. I'm not going to bother doing it by hand. Oh, well, I mean, I did. I did it before. Um, I don't want to write it all out. If you do it by hand, you get the answer of, hang on a second, 8 pi over 3. If you put it on your calculator, you get the answer of 8.378. Both are valid. Both are fine. If you want to take practice or have practice on doing integrals, go ahead. Otherwise, just put it in your calculator. Because what I'm concerned about is this method. All right, another example. This time we're rotating around the x-axis. Well, just like um, with the disk and washer method, if we're changing the axis, we just change the variables. Okay, we're just going to put it in terms of y instead of x, that's all. All right, the y's go from 0 to 4. Right, so we're taking this shell and rotating that around the x-axis. So we go from 0 to 4. y times f of y, which is 2 roots of y dy. And that's it. All right. If you want, again, do it by hand. If you do it by hand, you get, I think it's 256 pi over 5. If you put it on your calculator, you get 160.850. Right. Last problem. This is it. It's our last problem. I hope you guys are okay. I'll be all right. Which method is better? Do you want to use the shell method? Do you want to use the um, washer or disk method? Well, let's do both and figure out which one you like. In some cases, you can do both. In this particular example, oops, that's not a very good straight line. Let's do a graph, okay? So we have the graph of 3x. 3x will be some kind of straight line like that. We're going to use x equals 0 and x equals 3. So let's see, one, two, three. So let's say this is three. Okay. All right, this is x equals three. This is y equals three x. We're gonna deal with this region right here. Okay, and we're gonna rotate it around the x axis. I probably could be more clear about how I said this I didn't say that it was above the x-axis, and I probably should have, but we're going to make the assumption that this is the region, okay? All right. So if we do, uh, let's do the shell method. That's what we've been doing, right? If we do the shell method, okay, remember for the shell method, we're looking for the outside of a cylinder. So we're going this direction. And we're spinning this, we're making a bunch of cylinders. So the shell method says the y values. All right. 
so 2 pi. Now what's this intersection point up here? If the line is 3x and this is 3, then even though it's not to scale, this is the point 3, 9. Okay. All right, so where are the y values going to and from? Well, they're going from 0 to 9. y times the function of y. And we want to know this distance from here to here. Now again, these are in terms of y, so I, so I have to actually solve this equation for x. So y over 3 would equal x. So what's an expression for this distance, the height of our shell? Well, it would be 3 minus y over 3. That's the expression for the shell method. Now what about the disk method? So is it easier in this case? Well, let's see. So if we're using the disk method, we're spinning around the x-axis, I want to know a radius that goes from the center out to the edge. Right. So remember that volume was pi times, and since our, our um, cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis, it would be f of x squared. So let's see. The x values go from 0 to 3. The distance of this radius, what hits this graph? So it's just 3x. That's our radius. And remember, your f of x is our radius. So you have t these two very different looking integrals. But I've confirmed it. I put them in the calculator. And for both of them, you get the same exact answer of 254.469. Which way did you like better? That's up to you. Some people, some people feel very strongly about one way or the other. Some people always like the first way they were taught um, because that's what you got used to. Don't know. It's really up to you. Um, on the exam I gave you to do, which will be due on Friday, now you have every topic covered. And these are two specific problems that dealt with the shell method here. You've got all the information you need now. I'll be available tomorrow on Tuesday to go over any questions you have and also I will be online Thursday. Just by Friday, just up um, do that do that uh, assessment, upload it to me and let me know and then we're done. So I'll say more sentimental things later because I hope you get a chance to talk to all you guys one last time. But again, it's been a real, 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 really great year and a pleasure teaching you guys and thank you for all your hard work and I will see a lot of you next year. Alrighty, bye.